Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday. This is uh, June the ah the fifteenth. So June the fifteenth, twenty twenty-two. I'm Pastor Harvey Beck. We're glad you're joining us for our Wednesday devotion. Uh, just a couple of quick get updates for our folks. Uh, we are going again through Vacation Bible School this week. We've got those kids that are going into the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, so a little bit older. And I also wanted to just ask you to pray, whoever you are. We have a team going to Appalachia Service Project, which will be in the mountains of Tennessee this year. We went to West Virginia last year. So they're in Tennessee and trade Tennessee near the North Carolina border, just north of Boone, North Carolina. Anyway, they'll be doing projects and ministry and mission trip. About 30 of our folks here from uh, our church at Lester Memorial. So glad you're with us. Hey, last week I shared about Jonah. I'm going to talk about Jonah again because this week I just taught actually this just on Tuesday to our those kids that are that are a little bit older. And so they understand a little bit more. And, and that group going into fifth grade to sixth grade will be joining our youth group. So they do understand a little bit more. So I encourage them to read the entire book of Jonah and talk with it about their family. It's only four chapters long. I think last week I said three chapters. Somebody pointed that out. So it's either got three or four somewhere in there. It actually has four. So if you want to read the whole thing, it wouldn't take you very long. But I wanted to point out to you a couple of things as I talked to the kids this week and some extra scriptures. I went back to the to Genesis. In fact, the lesson recommended to this group reading from Genesis, the first chapter, verse 20 and 21, where it says, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to their kind. And so we went back and just reminded the, the students that we go back to Genesis, we realize God created all of this. It's his choice to create animals. So whatever kind of fish swallowed up old Jonah, God created. And uh, we don't know for sure if it was a whale or not. I think it probably was or certainly could have been. They could have been big enough. Two scriptures that I read to them, though, as we talked about Jonah was in Jonah 1.17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Very intentionally, God wanted us to know that statement in Jonah 1.17. Then God said in Jonah 2.10, so the Lord spoke to the fish. We can only use our imagination of how God may have chosen to do that. But the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited or spewed up Jonah onto dry land. Then he was ready. You know that he prayed while he was inside that belly. So I asked the students, and I'm asking you, when we go through troublesome times or even when we disobey God, because that's what Jonah did. Remember, God said to Jonah, go into Nineveh, preach to him. No, I don't like him. I'm going the opposite direction toward Tarshish. And so he got on that ship. He ends up being overboard at the great storm that came. Then the great fish swallowed, opened up its mouth and swallowed him. He goes inside the belly of the great fish. And very clearly, he's there for three days, three nights there in the belly of the fish. I didn't quote these two scriptures to you last week, but they are significant because Jesus quoted in Matthew, the other gospels too, but the same thing. But I'm going to read to you Matthew 12 and Matthew 16. Two statements. I'll give you the verses where Jesus actually spoke about Jonah very directly. So I taught the kids at the Bible school this week, the little older ones, that I wanted them to remember two words when they think about Jonah. Obedience. What does it mean for us to obey God or not obey him? And what does it mean if we go through life sometimes where we feel like we're on the inside of the belly of, of the great fish, if something's going on in our lives and we're troubled, what do we do? We call out for help. So we taught the kids again. This big fish reminds us there's a big God who created all things. There's also a God who has a big love and a God who gives us big help. One of the ways that we call out for help is we pray. Well, one of the chapters there in Jonah, those four chapters, is just a prayer that he prayed inside the belly of that great fish. So you can go back and read the whole thing, but what do we do when we're, quote, inside the belly of a fish? We sometimes cry out for help. We all can testify that a, this great big God who poured out his great big love on us 
gave us a big help in time of need. Sometimes, though, when we're disobedient, we go in the opposite direction of what God tells us to do. The other thing that Jonah did was he came back into Nineveh and called the entire nation to repentance. We know that they took sackcloth and ashes and they all repented. And so I encouraged these students this week to remember the word obedience and the word repentance. Obedience to God and repentance before God are extremely healthy, extremely important for all of us. So if you're going through something, maybe you've disobeyed God. Maybe now you've prayed and you've asked for his help and you've decided to be obedient. Whatever is in your life or mind that we need to repent of, why don't we just ask God today, please forgive me, I repent, and ask him to forgive us. So obedience and repentance are extremely important. The two passages I want to read to you that Jesus quoted, the first one is in Matthew, the 12th chapter, verses 39 through 41. Jesus answered them and said, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The people of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. So that puts relevance. It puts faith into the word of God. When we hear Jesus quoting Jonah exactly and giving the representation prophetically as he was in the belly of the fish for three days, so shall the Son of Man, Jesus, be three days before he rose from the dead. And so God gives a warning here. Jesus does. It's a clear warning, but he uses Jonah. So in our day and time, when we've got people that say, well, I don't care about the Old Testament, I don't believe it, or, oh, that's just some story that uh, somebody made up. Well, it was a story that God didn't make up. He put it in the Bible because it happened, and then Jesus talked about it hundreds of years later because Jesus is the author of the whole book. Then Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 3 and 5. It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Jesus said, you hypocrites. I told the students, I said, he said, you dummies. You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. You know how to predict the weather. You can see a storm cloud coming and you know it's going to rain. But he said, you can't discern the signs of the times and then he adds in verse 4 a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah and Jesus left them and he departed again twice in the gospels Jesus makes reference to Jonah which again makes us hopefully listen to it and learn something about obedience and about the power of repentance. And we know that they did repent, and God forgave them. The same God, the same big God, the big God full of big love, and the God who hears our cries for help, he also is more than willing to forgive us if we'll repent of our sins, and then he wants us to follow him. Follow me, for I will make you fishers of men, which is our whole theme in Vacation Bible School. We are fishers of people. So the students are doing servant work. They're being the light out to the world for Jesus Christ because we are still fishing for people. And we're reminded about the big fish that swallowed Jonah. It reminds us to be obedient and repent. Love you. Hope you have a golden day. See you next week on Wednesday morning. Lord willing.